You're listening to Our Space with Matt Batiste. Today's guest recently dropped their first EP, Side Effects, and they're getting ready to head on tour with games we play this spring. Chaney Elaine, vocalist for pop punk band House Parties, joins the Our Space podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today, Chaney. Hello, thank you for having me today. I'm super excited to have you on, uh, especially with your uh, recent EP release, relatively recent, four Mm -hmm. songs on it. Uh, Why don't you tell me what's the most exciting part of dropping your first EP? It's honestly, well, it's on our first EP because it's our first EP with a label. Okay. When you were unsigned, we had, we dropped our EP Tiny Rooms back in like 2021. What makes this one different uh, compared to that one is that like we can reach more, we've grown a lot since then, but we've reached more of an, like reach more people. But I think the most exciting part is just seeing how everyone is going to react to it and like seeing like everyone's favorite songs and like that kind of stuff. And have you seen much of a, of a reaction so far? Oh yeah. Everyone loves it. They're head over heels. Is there like one song in particular that tends to stand out the most? 100%. It's midlife crisis. (laughs) Why do you, why do you think it's midlife crisis? Like what about that song do you think really strikes a nerve with people? I think cause it's insanely relatable. Like I'm well at the time we were writing this I was 24 going on 25 I'm now 25 going to 26 I hate saying that but um at the time it was just like when I was writing it I just felt like everything was just falling apart in my life and I was like oh my god I feel like I'm having like a freaking crisis ah midlife crisis I'm having a midlife crisis in my 20s Um, so that's kind of where it happened. I think everyone can relate to it because, you know, when you're in your twenties, like everything is supposed to go wrong. You're supposed to experience like the good, the bad. So it's like, I know, I feel like everyone could just relate to it. Also, it's just really heavy. And I think people really like the heavier side of us. I don't know. I think that's what it is. Hitting that sort of mid twenties step is where. A lot of us are sort of feeling that like I, I'm in my 30s now, but I remember feeling like I was going through uh, I at the time I called it a quarter life crisis. But yeah, like you're in your mid 20s. So you're kind of like, you know, you're not a teenager anymore. But at the same time, you feel like you're sort of inching into your 30s. And then your 30s feels old when you're at that age. Uh, when you yeah. actually get to your 30s, it doesn't feel old anymore. I promise you. <laughs> but uh, but, you know. Yeah, like, do you ever feel like there is any added pressure sort of being at that stage in your life to sort of be more successful than you feel like you might be at that moment? A little bit. I feel like, I feel like with standards of like how the scene is sometimes, it can make you feel like you have to reach like a certain kind of successful goal by like a certain age. But when in reality, you really don't. Cause like there are plenty of like artists and like, and not even just like music, but like a a bunch of things where like people don't like really get their break until like they're way older. Um, So it's like, there really isn't a time limit. Um, But sometimes it can feel like there's a time limit because like, you know. um, Well, yeah, you see so many bands that are, you know, successful in their late teens to early 20s. But then, like you said, there are some bands that don't get their breaks into their 30s or even 40s sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel a little bit, but I've had to like slowly teach myself that the age doesn't matter right now about being successful. It it happens when it's supposed to happen for you. And everyone's different. Like there's there's not like a certain path that you would see somebody else on as like a band of artists that you're like oh i'm not at why am i i'm like that age why that why is that not happening to me because their path is different than your path for it so you're meant it's meant to happen when it happens for you that's why i don't yeah (laughs) it feels hard when you start to compare yourself to other people i can only imagine Mm -hmm. but also at the same time i mean you've seen a what feels like a ton of success recently with with house parties i mean even that song midlife crisis um you know you've worked with seth henderson uh, and you know he produced for a bunch of other 
other big bands and big pop punk bands and you're working with sort of the right people and you're seeing that success and you've got the label and all of that like how did that all sort of come to be and how does that sort of play into everything that you basically just said back when we released tiny rooms like the ep was in 2021 this didn't happen until 2022 um like state champs they were doing like this twitch stream I like reacting to different bands and artists and I just put one in there. I didn't end up watching the stream because I think I had something to do that. I can't remember, but I watched it the next day in the, in the morning and I found out that they had listened to tiny rooms and they were like super stoked about it. And Derek was like, fella in here, hit me up. Cause I really want to like write with y'all. And at the time, Seth had mixed Tiny Rooms um, because we had worked with um, Alex Zarek um, for music videos and him with like Mutant League. They had just had the connections. So I had that connection with Seth. Oh, God, it's so long ago. So I hit up Seth and because I knew they knew each other and um, the rest is history. So we just got into contact. We started writing and eventually we got help with getting into contact with booking agents. And then from there uh, with management and then labels. So kind of just started stacking it. One thing led to another and it just started stacking itself up. It's kind of fell into place. Do you find that interacting with sort of other people online makes a much bigger difference in terms of uh, the success of your band? Um, It's a little surreal. I will say like there are plenty of fans that I've talked to like even like on our last tour with Belmont can't swim like I met so many like fans that I have just talked to over the internet and then new fans and it was every second of it was amazing and I love it so much and then it's crazy because like it was very surreal I guess it's a really good example because like I'll talk to a lot of fans online um But then, like, at the same time, like, when you're on tour meeting fans and then you go, like, back to the green room and there's these, like, band members of bands that you listen to for a long time, you're like, oh, like, you're just there. It's 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 very surreal. Like, you're in the same spot doing the same things as the people that you sort of grew up listening to. Basically. Is there anybody that you would love to sort of be on tour with? Like, dream tour dream collaboration oh i have so many of those and they're all like different kind of like i would love a tour with like stan Atlantic. um i at the same time i'd also love a tour with third eye blind so, uh, two, two different jumps there and at the same time i would love to tour with, like pierce the veil and like bring me the horizon so it's like <laughs> three different kind of like genre like sub genre they're all still kind of in the same world right yeah yeah so it's like because i also have like at some point i would like to take this band heavier but for now we're kind of sticking transitioning into it um so we'll eventually get there i think personally <laughs> and what type of heavy like more screaming more like throwing in some breakdowns or just sort of like because i mean you guys are already relatively in sort of like pushing that heavy limit in terms of like lyrically and uh, i know you guys are more on that pop punk side but like how heavy in what sense uh heavy did you want to push it like if you take like midlife crisis and heavier like a little heavier than that like yeah I don't know. I feel like I I feel like people just really loved Midlife Crisis and cuz I sing with a lot of rasp, so I think people just really like when you combine the two it just makes sense. Kind of like how Stan Atlantic went a little heavier on their last record of us some stuff. And it's like, "Oh god, that's so good because Bonnie does amazing rasp and like she screams." So it just kind of like, I don't know. I loved it. And also, I kind of like heavier music, too. It's just more fun on stage. I'm curious, too, uh, speaking of this and wanting to get heavier, I've noticed on your social media pages that you sort of get a lot of comparisons to Paramore. I'm curious how you feel about those comparisons. 
I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. Um, I think what the whole thing is that like earlier when we talked about like people getting compared to like, not compared, um, when you start comparing yourself to other people and you're like, okay, but I'm this old and this hasn't happened to me yet. And it's like, you're trying to get yourself out of that headspace of comparing yourself to other people because it's one, it's not healthy for anyone listening. That's mm-hmm. not healthy. Um, just do your own thing at your own pace, at your own speed Two, like it, it just, uh, it just being constantly compared to somebody means that you're putting standards for yourself. And if you're not constantly reaching those standards, because Paramore was a very like special thing. I mean, like what Haley got signed when she was like a teenager. It doesn't happen very often, at least like in our kind of scene of music. So it's like, you're constantly putting a standard of where you're supposed to be at, you know? And then, um, and it's very like, at least where I am very unrealistic goals, but I don't want to say unrealistic, but, um, when, and then fans at the same time, sometimes they don't know better and that's okay. Cause sometimes people will be like, Oh my God, like, I love this song. Like it reminds me of Paramore. And it's like, so it'll come across as a compliment and I, and I take it as a compliment and that's fine. But then at the same time, you have other people that I have seen like comment on all of our stuff. That's like, they use it as an insult. They're like, Shh, paramour at home. Like literally you're a paramour poser, get your own voice. And it's like, I literally do. I can't help it if I sing and our, like our tones are very similar. Like I was born with these vocal cords. Like, I don't know what you want from me to get vocal cord surgery. Like, I don't know. (laughs) So it's like very, it's very mixed because to the people that don't know better, I just like, Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. But at the same time, stop comparing like everyone to Paramore. It's just like, we don't need those kind of like standards that we set for ourselves or like expectations that people are putting on us for like to reach certain goals. We kind of just want to be known for ourselves and do our own thing, you know? Yeah. I feel like I've also heard that sentiment a lot, which is also why I sort of wanted to ask because I mean, Paramore being the biggest female fronted band sort of in the scene, um, there are other, you know, women led emo bands and pop punk bands but uh everyone just see sees a, a lot of the times a woman fronting a pop punk band and they go oh paramore like and also at the same time like sometimes when we used to promote our music like in hashtags of, or like in videos of like if you like these bands of course we're gonna put paramore in the list because a lot of times if we don't you don't like people will not pay attention and they're like well like for example Maggie from Glimmers put out like Glimmers put out a song called Jaded. It was called something. It was called Haley, I think, but they changed it because it was very controversial, apparently. Um, But I love the whole message behind it. But in the video, like Maggie wears like a jacket that Haley had worn in still in like in the still into music video. And people were giving her so much hate for it. Like you want to sing about not being compared to Paramore, but you're also wearing Haley's jacket. And it's like, yes, because if we don't include all of that into it, you're not going to pay attention and get the point. And obviously a lot of people did not get the point, but I think what she did was brilliant and shout out to Glimmers and Maggie. Um, amazing people um it's just like if you don't mention paramore of some sort people are like eh but if you'd be like hey if you like paramore you're like us it's like oh i love paramore cool which is like it's like a double-edged sword almost there's no ignoring them right right but at the same time it's like everybody is their own individual person and their own individual band and i don't think there's any band out there at Maybe I shouldn't speak for everybody, but I feel like the average or majority of the bands out there want to be known for their work and for their thoughts and for, you know, what they've come up with and done, not for being related to what another band has done, right? Because then you're going to always be sort of compared to another band. And like you said, it feels like it's an impossible standard to sort of reach. And like nobody wants to be known as that like light band of someone else. They want to be their own thing. And, uh, And I think that you guys, like, you do that. 
you, the house parties is one of those bands where I threw it on and I didn't, I didn't see any pictures of you. I didn't see anything before that. It was someone reached out into my DMS and was like, Hey, check out this band. And I had the afternoon. So I was like, all right, through, through house parties on, on Spotify. And I was like, okay, like this is, you know, it felt like, it felt like you really, like you can almost hear when a band is inspired by a lot of the bands that you grew up listening to as well. But also at the same time, they took those inspirations and put it into their own original thing. And they're not just trying to sort of imitate the past. So like when I write a lot, I obviously everyone does, but I have my inspirations, um, which shockingly enough to everybody is not just Paramore. Paramore plays a small part. Um, I have a lot of inspirations, <laughs> but they're my favorite band, of course, but they're not the only people that I get inspired from. Like I'll listen to like new or artists and like discover new artists or bands and I get inspired by like, oh, I like that concept of that song. I kind of want to write something like that, but in my own way, I kind of just do things like, I think it was Poppy that said this one time. It was like, I just make music that I like. Like if I was going to listen to my band, this is what I would like to hear. And I think it works. So that's kind of like what, what we do, especially me. And I'm just like, I'm like, if I, if we write something that I'm like, I wouldn't listen to that. We need to change it. It's not gonna, you know, it doesn't feel right. Do you see that sort of being something that's going to continue to happen is sort of you grow and just sort of like the sound of house parties is also going to grow and evolve and change. And maybe you throw out like a heavy album next and then you're sort of throw out like an acoustic album and just sort of whatever you're feeling, or is there sort of a hint or a sound that you will always try to sort of capture? Um, I think it's mostly from what we're all feeling. Cause that's kind of what I love about bands is that like, like you could even put Paramore into like a good example for it. Like from the start of where they were to like their most recent album, it's so drastically different, but it's not any less good. It's like all good. And that's kind of what I like. I, I love when bands explore different like sounds and genres because it just keeps you like on your toes. If you expect a band, like a band to make this like the same album, different song names different lyrics different melodies but like the same kind of sound like every time you're gonna get bored you're not gonna go anywhere so like hell even boston manor is a great example because they started off like with two eps that were very pop punk like solely and like their stuff after that was kind of like it's still a twinge of pop punk but it was a little darker a little heavier and it was like oh that's like a good sweet spot and it works so it's like you don't you know i i also like just don't want to be like i'm kind of a little tired of pop punk i'll be quite honest it just feels like it's so oversaturated for me and like i really just want to stand out as a band and an artist and i just want to make music that one, the whole band loves and that I love, but the fans are going to love as well. Whether that's like changing your sound, so be it. Like also like if you're like on stage, if you're playing music that doesn't bring you joy, like what's the point? You know what I mean? Because like your whole point as like being an artist in a band is to play music that you love. And if you're not loving it, what's the point? So make stuff that- Yeah, then it just love. becomes a job. It becomes another job. So it's like, you might as well enjoy it. Just make music that you like and like want to perform, you know? And I feel like when you are making music that you like, that music will find its way to someone else that also likes that music. Exactly. Just be 100% authentically you. That's what always works. A thousand percent. I think that's a solid message. Also, I just realized because I noticed it looking at myself in this recording that I do have the Paramore album in the background. And I promise you, I didn't do that on purpose. That was just already there. <laughs> 
No worries. I'm like, I'm like that was there. That wasn't like a, a subliminal sign because I was interviewing you today. That was just that's been there for like a couple of weeks now, and I just haven't moved it. Every now and then I'll go and like shuffle up my records, but uh, I haven't shuffled them up in a little while. But <laughs> I like personally um, think that I don't ever that I won't ever like escape Paramore. But I think people should be more mindful of like when they think about giving like a compliment to an artist, like, oh my God, there might be a lot of Paramore. Should I say that to them? Or how about like, if you want to compliment somebody about that, assume that they've already been told that a thousand times. Yeah. I feel like if you're going to compliment a band, compliment them about something that they're doing that you like, not something that somebody else did, because I feel like it's, you know, you're almost like complimenting Paramore in that sense, no? Yes. Where did house parties come from? I just randomly thought of it one day and I was like hoping and praying to God that it wasn't taken. And I like looked all over like Spotify and everything and it wasn't. And I was like, cool. But also we've kind of like given it a meaning like over the past couple of years. Like when you go to a house party, I've been to plenty um, oddly enough, I'm the partier of the group, even though I don't, drink or do drugs crazy um <laughs> but i kind of get heart house parties is like everyone's there to have a good time regardless of the crap that they're going through and the hard things that they're going through you're kind of just there to like just be with your friends and just kind of like let loose and have a good time you know be with friends that support you and like that are always there for you and just let loose and no judgment or anything um So that's kind of what, like, we've turned it into. It's just like, you know, at a house party show, everyone's just kind of there to have a good time. Well, like, music is an escape from the real world, so our house parties. It's it's a perfect mesh. It just makes sense. Anything else other than this EP that you are really excited for? Any sort of new music um, that you're sort of already focusing on or working on or is it just sort of like we put this ep out now we're really excited for this and uh we're gonna sit on this for a little while see how it does and then move on to other things we're already starting to write for like an album (laughs) um so that's like in the works and then but like for me i'm already planning like an album after that and an album after that you know the writing just never stops you're already looking like five years into the future I mean, like, if you think about it, like, I'm not the biggest, like, Taylor Swift, fa- like, Taylor Swift fan, um, but I do admire and respect how, like, her as a songwriter. She is phenomenal as a songwriter, and you kind of have to look, like, she well plans things in advance, like, years in advance, and, like, that's how you, that's how you do it. That's how you stay on top of the game, unless you want to take, like, I mean, there's no right or wrong. But like, I love that because I'm always constantly coming up with song ideas and I'm like, oh, probably can't use it for this, but we can always use it in the future. Here's like a whole album based on something like that. Like, you just never know. I think however you feel about Taylor Swift, whether you like her music or not, you have to respect her. I mean, she is, like you said, a phenomenal songwriter and like very smart businesswoman as well, because I feel like even throughout the pandemic, she... uh, dropped uh, Evermore and Folklore and those two albums just ha- sort of had like that different vibe and sort of playing on the whole eras of the different styles of music and how she sort of evolved. And she's a great example of like what we were talking about earlier is that like while she still maintains herself, she can have different sounds and it works. And that's something that I'm heavily inspired by. See, it's not just Paramore, everyone. Taylor Swift plays a big role as well. Every single artist does it. Like every artist evolves, right? Like if you're not evolving, it gets boring. It gets boring and you don't want to be stuck. And you're wondering like, why are we never like going anywhere? And it's just like, cause you keep putting out the same thing. And we already have other albums of that same thing. We don't need any more. You can kind of keep the same vibe, but you know, sort of evolve the style of songwriting into a new exciting sound that gives some sort of like freshness to the band. Yeah. And like, it just, you also just want to push yourself as songwriters too. Cause if you're also not pushing yourself and like to get better, you could be on top of your game. You could be very successful, but if you're still not pushing yourself and not like, you know, challenging yourself all the time and not like constantly getting better at your craft, like what are you doing? You know? So 
like I used to struggle so much with like melodies but lately like I guess over the past year like even like with working with Derek because that guy comes up with the craziest catchiest melodies seriously he's an amazing songwriter I said I've said that every time that somebody asked me but he's amazing if y'all have a chance to work with Derek from say chance do it you will not regret it because I feel like cautious is what really like put us on the map and then you know we went from there but um he he you know like working with him and songwriting with him like in the studio for like two weeks you just kind of like see how he like writes and like you pick up a lot of these tips and tricks and I feel like I've definitely gotten better with writing melodies as of lately um which is really which is really good like I've come up with some stuff I'm like oh my god like I wrote that like that's nuts are you the type of person that sort of like builds off of other people's vibes so you you know seeing him do something uh you know you sort of almost like visually see and audibly hear him do that and you're like oh okay like that's how he's doing it i can sort of take that and make it my own and, and do it where like i hadn't thought about it that way before yes and no like when i'm like i do most of my songwriting here or in my bed shockingly enough and then there's my other, I don't know if you can see him. No, he blends in. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he really blends in. You can't see him. He's right there, but you can't really. Yeah. But, um, I do a lot of songwriting in my bed. Like when I'm legit falling asleep at night, which is about two to 3am because I like to stay up late. I'm a night owl. That's just when my brain works the best is just really late at night. Also kind of like Taylor Swift, like with midnight. So she was like, you know, I write all these songs like super late at night and I'm like, girl, I'd be finding myself doing that too. Coincidentally, um, just a little, which is why I like, I respect her a, a little bit more. It's just because like, I can relate to it. Um, but I'll like be falling asleep. And then my brain goes into like that state where you're just, it's kind of starting to fall asleep. And then it just suddenly like wants to write amazing melodies and lyrics and ideas. And so I have to like, drag myself out of that state and like just get my phone out, start writing ideas and like voice memoing ideas. And then a lot of songwriting when I work on those is like late at night too, from like 11 o'clock to like 1 a.m. Sometimes because that's just when like I get all my really good ideas. You ever wake up in the middle of the night and like with an idea or something that you dreamed of and you're like, where's my phone? I need to put this in the, in the notes. And then you're just like, I can't even read this anymore. Sometimes like legit, it's very weird. You know, when you like manifest a lot of things and then it, like it happens, does it, you know, it doesn't matter how it happened. It, it's happening. So like, you know, I manifested that I wanted to be a really great songwriter, you know, a bunch of that kind of stuff. And like, I will just be falling asleep and like these ideas come and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, like so good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Do you have like a vision board and all of that too? Or is it just sort of, you know, these are my goals and I'm just going to manifest them. That's my 20 vision board. Um, I'm not really going to show what's on it, but <laughs> to say a lot of cool things are on there, like performing in front of a giant, like crowd, like huge crowd, um, tours, um, traveling a lot, you know, money, all the usual things on there typical stuff yeah getting a feature with taylor swift or something that would be <laughs> insane i don't think that would ever happen but that would be insane it, it's kind of like even paramore is like way too big to even like i think like work with them they're so enormous now they're just so like famous and successful that we're not there yet but yet so. <laughs> Put it on the vision board and manifest it, and you never know. I mean, we'll see where things go. You guys have a, a good head on your shoulders, obviously. You're doing all of the right things. You're writing great songs. I think that's what it comes down to uh, ultimately is write the great songs, and hopefully people find them. Uh, you are going on tour this spring. We've mentioned it before with games we play. Uh, is there anything that you're particularly excited about for that tour? We haven't fully like agreed on the covers we're doing yet, but if it's the covers that I think we want to do like two covers and not like we want to do one cover in the set every night, but we kind of want to alternate it. 
um, every night. I think it'd be really fun. Well, the covers that I want us to do are Smells Like Teen Spirit and then Heart Attack by Demi Lovato. I really like it when heavier bands or bands within like the emo and pop punk scene, um, they cover band, bands or songs that aren't a part of that scene, you know? It's like giving it that that extra little taste of what the song could have been if it was a song written for a pop punker sort of emo show, you know? Mm-hmm. I also just feel like that song fits with this tour. Because for me, whenever like I'm determining like a cover, it's not necessarily like what I want to play. It's more of like, I take a look and I'm just like, okay, what's the vibe of this tour? You have this artist and this artist, which gives very like this kind of vibe. So let's try to find something that matches that, which are going to bring in fans that match that kind of vibe. I like that Mm -hmm. vibe. So let's match that vibe. So they're not going to be like, what the heck during the set? Like you don't want to play something that doesn't fit. It's just kind of weird. Just learning from experience. Um, I don't want to do that again. You say again, what was the song that, uh, that didn't vibe with the audience? I mean, like, not like, I'm sure they didn't not vibe with it, but like on the Belmont tour, we did two covers. Our first one was Vampire Money by My Chemical Romance because I really like that song and um, it's just cool energy, but not a lot of people know it. So it's going to get, you want to like cover something that people are going to know, unless you're just a really giant artist, it doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. But it didn't like compared to us covering Given Up by Linkin Park. Linkin Park did significantly better because it just it just fit the vibe of that tour better. So eventually we just got rid of it and just um, did Linkin Park. So that's kind of what my experience is and kind of what I plan to do. So I would really like to do Heart Attack, but I know... Smells Like Teen Spirit would probably be really cool, too. I don't know yet. So we'll see. I think both of those are good options. Whatever you settle on, I think will be a fun one. So uh, people definitely got to show up on that tour and come check you out and figure out which one you guys finally settled on. Mm -hmm. You are obviously one of the the up and coming bands that... uh, people are talking about right now and at the end of each podcast episode i typically like to ask my guest who their favorite up and coming band is because i like to sort of spread that love so we can get more exposure to bands like yourself and to other bands that are working as hard as you are right now is there any other up and coming band that you'd like to give a shout out diva bleach glimmers and then there's a lot of, I have a lot of friends in the music scene here in DFW. So I'm going to shout out their band names. Do it. Love them. Like Waiting for April, All There Is, Moonstone with a Period. Yeah, those are the bands. If you need new art to listen to those bands. Listen to those bands, listen to house parties and uh, catch them on tour with games we play this spring. Check out their latest AP side effects. And thank you so much for taking the time to join me today, Chaney. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Our Space with Matt Batiste. If you enjoyed yourself, please support the show by subscribing and leaving a review.